in my high school were playing on Peter and the Wolf. Oh yes. And there's this um, part where um, the clarinet, bassoon, and the flute have that same excerpt together, and I was wondering how could I be able to match myself with those other instruments, like any technical. Because of. I'm sorry. Match yourself. Yeah, like I don't know how to explain it. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling. You mean it. dynamically? Well, it's pretty difficult. Because clarinet, play, they play loud. Yeah. Okay, can we repeat the question for the audience? Okay, the question is that they're playing Peter and the Wolf in her high school. Very good high school, huh? <laughs> and you want to know how to match your playing, your sound, basically yeah. with the other instruments, the clarinet and... Clarinet, bassoon, oboe, right. That's the question for Sir James. So now he's going to answer it. Well, I did. <laughs> but the, uh, the, you know. the audience didn't know the question. Oh, okay. You know, it's always a problem balancing the flute and the clarinet. Because clarinet players, they play loud. And it's very difficult to convince them that they should be matching up with some other people. <laughs> you have a thing about clarinet players. I've noticed that before. No, I, I had very good relations with Clarinet, but you know, my whole entire six years in the Berlin Philharmonic, I never tried one note for intonation with Carl Eiser. It was always perfect. Always. Great player. Yeah. Okay, uh, on materials for flute, <coughs> the latest one is, is platinum and gold. Uh, do you like platinum over gold, or do you like them equally well? Yeah, you know... <laughs> oh, that's loaded. It's not such a difficult question. I prefer platinum. Okay. But, in fact, I just play the one that works the best, and I always <laughs> carry three flutes with me. So at least one of them has got to be able to get low D. <laughs> oh, very good. But can you explain about this particular platinum flute that you're holding? Oh, this one is made by Nagahara. Hold it like a sword. It is a sword. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I didn't want to. Quiet, the cheap seats. <laughs> I didn't want to have a platinum flute made just like off the rack. You know, they order a piece of platinum and they make a flute. I, I always thought, and I have three platinum flutes, I thought they're a little bit too heavy to chew. Not too heavy to hold, but. Too, too heavy to play, and I asked Murama, uh, I asked Nagahara if he would shave the tube down, and he did. I think it drove him nearly to the insane asylum, <laughs> but he did it, and I think it's a really great flute. This. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, you what I was thinking. But Jimmy, you also tend to like the the lighter. The 14 yeah, I prefer. I like. I like to play my 14 karat gold flute and my 14 karat Muramatsu. And the you like your nine karat. The one with the diamonds in it. Nine <laughs> well, I got the diamonds in it by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a gig in, in Perth, in Australia, and it was promoted by the Argyle Diamond Company, and they wanted to make me diamond buttons for my shirt, but I don't wear those sort of shirts. I tend to wear this shirt that's on the floor of the bed when I get up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they they came up with the idea to put them on my flute. So they put a ring here, and a ring here, and a ring here as well. So that was their contribution, and that's the flute that I played most of my career on. So you're into bling. Into what? Bling. What's that? <laughs> Diamonds. <laughs> Diamonds. <laughs> Jewelry. No. Accessories. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> not really. Yes? Uh, what would you say the main difference is, you know, when playing flute in an opera versus in an orchestra? Well, in an orchestra, you're in the showcase. The orchestra is a showcase. In the opera house, it's an accompanying body. But I mean, you know, I, I enjoy playing in the, in the opera. And I, I could play Carmen and uh, Tosca from memory. 
Because <laughs> we just did them so many times. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a Galway Academy question. If we want to continue to interact with you, study with you, but maybe we can't get to Switzerland, what other options are there? What can Call we me up on Skype. No. <laughs> you'll get, you'll, oh. uh, you just uh, sign up on the, the right www.galwayflutacademy.com and you'll get newsletters and information. And we have a whole new person organizing this, so you'll be getting also in your region. Like we already know we're coming back here and doing a big class in October. And we already know when our others are. We'll be in Italy. That's a nice place to come. Right there. Right there. November. London. I'll tell Santa. No, up on the academy, you'll be getting it. Give us your Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the gossip is that, Sir James, you're studying uh, jazz and working on your improvisation. Is there any yeah. plans to... Um, Perform. No, not really. I'm, not really. I'm just doing it out of interest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, the word is out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, if I have to play with certain singers who are jazz singers, I think I should be able to at least speak the language. Such Gee. as what Sorry. singers are you referring to? Or? I wasn't referring to any particular <laughs> but, but you did just play with Van Morrison on his CD. Oh, yeah. And um, um, Sir James is playing with things in different keys. You know, in the in the uh, sonority, Moise does recommend that you play things in different keys. But no, people don't do that. 
really hard to even see it. One page, because they think by the time I've done page, the first 10 pages, I've got it. But you haven't got it. It's a long way off. The margin is very steep and hard. It's hard going to get off there. <laughs> you know, if, if I pass the amendment note to make it begin to handle some other B should be able to do that <coughs> and they should then realize that when you play it starting on what was the first note the C sharp B B flat mm -hmm. uh, starting on that note it's a whole different embouchure game as when you start on G I mean if you play the saxophone for example you're continually changing the embouchure to get the note in tune and when you hear some of these big saxophone players Why are they always perfect? And when I play the saxophone, it's horrible. <laughs> because they practice the stuff, and I haven't got around to it yet. I think they've kind of read the class before. I, I play jazz, and I play sax, so you play in keys, playing yeah. all keys. That's right. You, you play licks through all the keys, but I don't yeah. know the classical people necessarily do that as a no, normal thing. They don't do it in even abnormal. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, would you talk more about um, achieving a variety of colors in the sound? You mentioned that earlier in the day. Um, yeah, I think how do you. Um, well, you fiddle around with the embouchure. You know, and then you're able to. When you do things like. <coughs> See, you can do that sort of thing, and when you practice it, and you've got a good embouchure, you can do it even better. But the possibility is there. But then you, you really need to practice it, and practicing scales is not always like... <laughs> So you practice to get your embouchure. The whole, the whole secret of playing the flute is to have a good embouchure at the right time, all the time. Good embouchure at the right time, all the time. That means that you bring, a, you bring stuff into tune. You don't just play a note and think, oh well. Oh yeah, C sharp, it's not, it's not a Bennett scale, it must be. <laughs> Yep. I wanted to um, ask you a question about, you were speaking before about uh, flute players 
memorizing things. Yeah. What's your philosophy about how flute players should approach memorizing music? Well, it's very easy. You sort of look at the you look at the piece, mm -hmm. like for example, Chaminade, the beginning, this this first theme, comes again an octave higher, and then it comes again after the cadence.